What's up guys? It's a sunny Thursday afternoon. Just put our name on the 1-2 uh, and 1-3 lists at the Lodge in Round Rock, Texas. Just waiting to see what we called for. Uh, we're gonna take whatever we get, but uh, that's pretty much it. Looking forward to see where we land. Let's get to it. About 30 minutes into the 1-2 table, we pick up Ace Jack Offsuit. There's two limpers and I raised to $15 in the cutoff. The button and both the limpers make the call and the four of us head to a flop of 9-2 jack with two clubs. The first player leads for $10, which is a pretty weak lead. The other limper calls and with top pair top kicker, I want to put on the pressure, so I grab a stack and push it in. The dealer counts it out and it's $52. The initial better calls and the player between us folds, so we're heads up to the turn where we see the six of hearts. The limper leads again for $50 this time. This card shouldn't have changed anything, and honestly, this feels like a blocking bet. If I had to guess, this player probably has a hand like King Jack or Queen Jack for top pair with a worse kicker. After thinking on it, this really feels like the most likely scenario, so I push all in for $200 even. My opponent thinks for a long time. The longer he thinks, the more I start to believe our hand is good. And after more than a minute, he finally releases his cards, and we scoop the pot. Thank you. A few hands later, we pick up King-10 suited in the plus one position. The first player limps, and I raise to $10. The small blind and the limper both make the call, so the three of us head to the flop, which comes Jack-5-2 with two spades. So we flop the second nut flush draw, but nothing else. Both players check to me, so I see bet for $20. The small blind calls, and the limper now goes all in for $63. I'm sure I'm behind, but I'm getting a great price on my draw, so I make the call, and the small blind calls as well. The turn brings the five of clubs, and we don't improve. When it checks to me, there's no reason to bet into a dry side pot, so I check behind for the free river. Unfortunately, we completely miss when the river brings the five of hearts, and it goes check check again. The Olin player shows he's got ace jack for top pair, and we muck. Anything else I can do for you, Percy? After about an hour at the 1-2 game, we get called for the 1-3 match the stack game, so we rack up a profit of $55. We're only two hands into the table when we pick up Pocket 7 sitting in the cutoff. There's a $6 straddle, the low jack calls, and I raise to $30. The blinds and straddle fold, and the low jack calls, so we're heads up to the flop. The flop comes 3-5 queen with two hearts. My opponent checks to me, and with second pair here, I see bet for half pot, $35. He pretty quickly calls, so we're headed to a turn of the two of diamonds. This shouldn't change anything. I want to charge a flush draw even though I'm wary that my opponent could be holding a queen, in which case betting the turn and checking behind the river might be my best move. When my opponent checks again, I bet once more for $55. He pretty quickly calls, and given the action, I'm most worried about a flush draw at this point, and in my head I'm thinking, just don't put the seven of hearts out there. On the river we see, you guessed it, the seven of hearts. My opponent now leads into me for $145. I was saying in my head, do not put the seven of hearts out there. <laughs> the one card I don't want to see. I have the call though. I got a set. He seemed hesitant to show when I called, so I show my set and he mucks. Our hand is good. He goes on to ask if his bet on the river would have gotten me to fold if the river was any other heart, which leads me to believe he was hoping to bluff me off my hand and didn't really hit anything. The very next hand, we pick up Queen Nine Suited sitting in the hijack. The plus two player raises to 15. The middle position player calls, I call, and the cutoff calls as well, so the four of us head to a flop of Jack-8-10 with two diamonds. We flop the absolute nuts with a redraw to the straight flush. What a monster. The initial better leads for $55. The next player folds, and I've got such a strong holding at this point that there's not too many turns that I'm worried about. I decide to flat call to give the player behind a chance to join us, and he does. On the turn, we see the Jack of Clubs. This is not one of the turn cards that I wanted to see, as it pairs the board. The original better checks now, and I decide to check here to see what the player behind does, and he opens for $150. The initial better folds, and I think a call here is best rather than raising. On the river, we see the nine of clubs. This board is not looking as good for us now. We've still got the straight, but there are a number of Jack X holdings that beat us. I think we just have to check call at this point, given how we've played the hand so far. So I check, and when our opponent checks behind, I'm pretty sure we're good, so I show the straight. Our opponent mucks, and we scoop a nice pot. Yeah. Yeah, I hit my straight too. Thank you. I was literally putting money on. 
Two hands later, we've got Queen Knight suited again, this time in clubs. The plus two player raises to $10, and I call next to act in middle position. The hijack and small blind both call, and the big blind re-raises to $30. It's a pretty small raise, so the plus two player calls, and given the pot, I decide to call for $20 more. The hijack, who was last to act now, goes all in for $184. Most times I've seen this, it's been a mediocre ace high or middling pair, but I've only seen that at 1-2, and I've never seen this happen at 1-3 yet. The big blind calls, and there's no way we can call here, so I toss in my cards. The results aren't too important other than seeing the big blind who re-raised to 30 and called the all-in made the play with 6-5 offsuit. I'm more interested in your feedback on my line here. Perhaps queen knight suited is too weak of a hand to be calling behind in the spot for the game given my position. We're only at this table for 20 minutes before we get moved to the main game. We're only three hands into the table when we look down at pocket queen sitting in the plus one position. The first player act folds and I raise to $20. The button, the small blind, and the big blind all make the call, so the four of us head to the flop, which is five queen king with two hearts. So we spike a set. When it checks to me, I see bet for $50. The button calls, and the small blind raises to $200. What a dream spot. The big blind folds, and now I have to figure out how much to raise. I think about making it $450 or $500, but this is such a wet board, and I'd be leaving myself an awkward bet size for the next street, so I decide I'm just going to ship it all in for 1049 total. The button folds and the small blind insta-calls. I've never had so much of my own money at risk in a single hand, and at this point, I'm not exactly sure what I need to avoid. Worst case scenario, I'm up against some kind of combo draw. The turn brings a scary jack of diamonds putting three to a straight out there. Thankfully, the river pairs the boards with the jack of spades giving us a boat. I show my hand. My opponent shows king-10 suited in hearts for top pair with a flush draw on the flop, and we're good. We scoop the biggest pot I've ever won for $2,228. Yeah. <laughs> After the blinds pass, we pick up king-10 offsuit sitting in the cutoff. There's two limpers, and I raise the $20. The button and both limpers make the call, and the four of us see a rainbow flop with an ace and two deuces. It checks to me, and this should hit my raising range, so I see bet for $35. Everyone folds, and we pick up a decent pot with no resistance. The very next hand, we've got ace deuce suited in hearts, and we're sitting in the hijack. There's an under the gun straddle for $6. There's one caller, and I call as well. Both blinds call, and the straddle checks, so the five of us head to the flop. The flop comes three queen five rainbow, so we flop a gut shot with an overcard. It checks to me, and I open for twenty dollars. The straddle and lipper both make the call, so we're down to three for the turn, which comes the king of spades. It checks to me again, and given the resistance on the flop, this doesn't feel like a great card for me to bluff on, so I opt to check behind for a free river where we see the six of diamonds. We miss completely, and I'm giving up on the hand here. The straddler checks to the limper, who now bets fifty dollars. I fold, and the other player calls. The better shows 6-4 offsuit for second pair on the river, and the straddle shows queen-2 offsuit for top pair on the flop. We were behind the whole way, and judging by the action, it looks like we were not going to get that queen to fold with a bluff. Just three hands later, we've got ace-queen offsuit sitting in the plus one position. There's a $6 straddle, and I raised to $20. The button, the small blind, the big blind, and the under-the-gun player all call, so the five of us headed the flop of a king-10-8 rainbow. So we flop a gut shot, but given how many players are in the hand, I'm not excited about c-betting here. It checks to me, I check back, and the button checks behind for a free turn, which comes the 9 of clubs. The blinds check to the under the gun player, who now leads for $50. There's no reason for me to continue here with three other players left to act and nothing but a gut shot, so I throw my hand in. I didn't capture the results, but I know for a fact that we were behind, and I don't think we were going to get anybody to fold with any kind of bluff here. Two hands later, we've got Jack-8 suited in hearts in the big blind. We see four players limp in, the small blind completes, and I check for a free flop. And the flop comes deuce-jack-9 rainbow, so we hit top pair with a not great kicker. I'm intending to lead here, but the small blind beats me to the punch, making it $15. I decided to protect my hand, and I raised to $45. The player behind me cold calls, which I did not want to see, and the small blind calls as well. So the three of us head to the turn of the eight of diamonds. We've got two pair now, but given the cold call by the player behind, I decide to check here to see if they'll bet. They end up checking behind, unfortunately, so we're headed to the river where we see the ace of diamonds. But when the small blind checks to me, knowing that the in position player checked behind on the turn, I'm not expecting either of them to have a flush here. I decide to go ahead and make a somewhat thin value bet for $80. Both players end up folding, and we take it down with no showdown.
A few hands later, we pick up 90 offsuit sitting in the low jack. There's one limper, and I raised to 15. The big blind and the limper both call, and the three of us head to a flop of Deuce Ace Deuce Rainbow. This flop is the same as one of the hands we had earlier where I was the razor pre flop, so when it checks to me, I see bet again for $20, hoping to take it down. Just the big blind calls, and we head to the turn where we see the Deuce of Hearts. There's now three deuces on the board, and any ace makes a boat. My opponent could have an ace here, but there's also a chance they called light with a pocket pair. I decide to bet once more to see if I can get such a hand to fold, so when it checks to me, I make it $30. When she checks again, I know I'm beat and I'm giving up on this one. The river brings the ace of clubs, so there's now a boat on the board. It checks to me a third time and... Check, I'm playing the board. Mm -hmm. okay. ace is full. My opponent shows they've got an ace, so we lose a small pot. Later that orbit, we've got Queen Jack Offsuit sitting in plus one. I raised the $12 and six players end up making the call. So we head to a big multi-way flop of Ace Jack Nine Rainbow. It checks to me and given how many players are in the hand, I'm checking here with second pair. After everyone checks around to the button, they open for $30. It could be a positional bet and even though there are two callers ahead of us, I opt to call as well since I'm getting a pretty good price at this point. The player behind me calls as well, so we've got five players of the turn, which comes the three of spades. It checks through this time, so there's a remote chance our jack is good. On the river, we see the four of hearts. This probably doesn't change anything. It checks around once more, and we're headed to showdown. The button announces they have a jack, but the player behind me shows ace eight for top pair, so we muck. Perhaps there was a more aggressive way I could have played the hand given the hesitancy showed throughout the hand by all players, or perhaps I simply should have folded after the bet and two calls on the flop. <laughs> 15 minutes later, we've got King 10 suited and heart sitting in the hijack. There's another under the gun straddle for $6, and when it folds to me, I raise to 20. The button, the small blind, and the straddler all call, so we've got four players to the flop. The flop comes 10 10 5 with two spades, so we flop trips. It checks to me, and given that we've got a few other people in the pot, I go ahead and see bet for $40. Just the button calls, so we're heads up. On the turn, we see the Jack of Diamonds. I decide to slow down and feign like I'm worried about the board, hoping my opponent will bet. But unfortunately, they check back and we're getting a free river, which comes the Nine of Clubs. This could complete some straights, but I don't want to miss any value if our opponent has a weaker hand, and I decide to lead this time for $80. Unfortunately, our opponent folds, but we win a pretty nice pot. Thank you. In the last interesting hand of the night, we've got King Queen Offsuit in the plus one seat. I raised to $11, two players call, and we see a flop of 10-8 Jack Rainbow. So we've got a straight draw with two overs, and I decide to see bet here for $15. Just the player behind us calls, so we're heads up to the turn, which brings the seven of spades. We don't improve, and there's four to a straight on the board now. I checked my opponent, who bets $30. We're still getting pretty good odds to hit our straight. Our opponent may not have the straight, but even if they do, if an ace comes, we stand to potentially win a lot of money with a higher straight. With that in mind, I decide to make the call. The river brings the queen of clubs, so we pair up, but it's still not a pretty board for one pair. I check again, and now our opponent bets $65. I deliberate for almost a minute here. I so badly want to call, but I just don't think there's much we beat. In the end, I muck, and our opponent graciously shows the nine of clubs for the straight, so we made a good fold. Shit, you guys that was awesome so we uh we played one two for a little bit bought in for uh 300 cashed out for 355 so just a little 55 dollar win there and then uh played some one three bought in for 555 i brought my uh 355 over bought bought in for uh 200 more so we're at 55 in and cash out for 2095 so pretty huge win there that uh i also just won the biggest pot of my life so that pocket queen's hand where we flopped a set never won a pot that big in my life i, I could not believe that it held um very glad that it did though so we are past the 90 percent point of hitting the 10k bank roll it might happen this year after all so gonna keep going for that and uh yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes see when i can get out here again um 
If you enjoyed the video, enjoy the vlog, please hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll uh, see you on the next one. Thanks. Take care.